This video is brought to you by Wix. What's up my fellow Illuminati spherist shills, Jared here. If you don't spend your late nights exploring the deep crevices of the internet, you may have missed the growing number of people committed to proving that the earth is flat. Flat earthers have increasingly been the subject of scorn and ridicule as their numbers grow on YouTube and social media. And while rehashing debates that were concluded centuries ago is fun, I'm not exactly here to prove that the earth is round. Instead, I wanna talk about how flat eartherism speaks to another crisis. Namely, how do we know that we know shit? We're currently living in a crisis of knowing shit. Our trust in the people who are supposed to know things has rapidly eroded. Do scientists know things? Do physicians know things? Do government agencies? What about the hit Facebook page, Moms United Against Vaccines slash GMO slash Harry Potter? Do they know things? And while we may laugh at the routine slam dunking of people we don't agree with, it's missing the point a bit, because our society is undergoing a problem that is caused by, and affects, all of us. So let's get real nerdy about the philosophy of science in this wisecrack edition on Flat Earthers. But before Jared gets into that, a quick word from me, Mark Schroeder, AKA Garrix Wormuloid, here to talk about this video's sponsor, Wix. Now, as some of you know, I'm not just an alien, I'm also an actor. And a great way for me to get my work seen is with a killer website. So that's why I decided to make a free, awesome looking site with Wix. And it was so simple. All I had to do was tell Wix that I was making a website for myself, tell them the kind of website I wanted, and whether or not I'd ever made a website before. Spoiler alert, I hadn't, but it was so Simple and so easy. Before I knew it, the site builder was asking me my style, my design preferences. I was dragging and dropping photos and videos right into my website. It was so simple to do. And right now you can get started for free yourself. All you gotta do is go to wix.com slash wisecrack or click the link in the description below. Okay, Jared, back to you. For anyone who isn't caught up on Flat Earth, this discussion is motivated by the recent Netflix documentary, Behind the Curve. But don't worry, you don't really need to have watched it. Flat Earth theories are a little bit scattered in their beliefs. Is it a dome or an infinite plane? How far away is the sun? What causes an eclipse, etc. But they're unified in the idea that the Earth as sphere is deliberate misinformation propagated by some shadowy agents, including, but not limited to, NASA, the governments of the world, and probably after this video, Wisecrack. One prominent model featured in Behind the Curve is that the Earth is a flat plane enclosed in a dome called a firmament. 70% of them believe that this is covered by some sort of dome. A concept that dates back at least to the biblical story of Genesis. The sun travels in circles above the Earth, not millions of miles away as understood by scientists, but thousands. And it's not really a huge ball of fire radiating light in all directions, but along with the moon, is more like a flashlight illuminating parts of the globe. So how does one get to the point where they reject the round earth? Well, you ask questions like, why don't planes go to or pass Antarctica? Why haven't oil companies set up shop on Antarctica? Why are there only composite images of the earth and not whole images? Now your first thought may be, these people are complete idiots. Why are you wasting your time on this? But behind the curve complicates this understanding. We see smart, critical humans who say things like this. I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. Or this. I mean, I think that the scientific method is the best way to get to the truth. Or a guy who's smart and talented enough to make a badass motorcycle out of wood, which, hey, I couldn't do if I tried. Flat Earth and other debates about otherwise accepted scientific fact bring out a much larger problem. Our understanding of science is terrible. And I'm not complaining that people don't remember the laws of thermodynamics or that I still don't understand how magnets work. Water, fire, air, and dirt. F***ing magnets, how do they work? I'm talking about the philosophy of science. So what is the philosophy of science? It's philosophy, obviously, that asks questions like, how do we distinguish science from non-science? And with that, how should we weigh evidence when testing a hypothesis? What kind of evidence is acceptable? Basically, how do we know if we know shit? You might remember learning the scientific method, and that's part of it, but it barely scratches the surface. There are a lot of philosophies of science, and I'm not here to tell you what the right model is. It's important to understand that all of these frameworks have strengths and weaknesses. And to us, it's our general ignorance of how science works that allows for the abuse of scientific language we see in things like Flat Earth. So to get a better understanding of how Flat Earthers can use the language of science and evidence to persuade people, let's go back in time. In the early 1900s, there was a scientific doctrine posed by a group known as logical positivists called verificationism. This model essentially posits that science is something that can be verified. If it can't be verified, it ain't science. 
So philosophical statements like the meaning of life is be excellent to each other. Not science because, you know, how would you verify that? Let's start with a very simple example. If I were to say, this swan is white, you could say, hey, it looks white to me. I could pass it around and you could also verify it is white. So awesome, we're using our senses in a way that can be replicated by others, so it's been verified. And as such, this swan is white could be considered a meaningful scientific statement. In this model, if you want to verify that the Earth is round or flat, one way would be to go up in space and look at it. How do you know it's a globe? Well, it's because you saw this. It's not like you've been up there in your Jetsons car. Nobody's got a spaceship. And in this way, flat earthers seem to at least allude to this basic idea of verification. But how do you verify a statement like all swans are white, which Europeans considered to be the case before the 1600s? Let's say you and others have encountered thousands of swans and every single one was white. Is this evidence enough? Well, not quite for the verificationist, and this was a huge problem for them. When it came to universal statements like all swans are white, all hipsters drink PBR, all mass exerts gravitational pull, you can never truly verify that. What if there's a theoretical hipster out there who shuns PBR in favor of Heineken? Heineken? F*** that sh Paps Blue Ribbon! Or a black swan, which, by the way, was discovered by Europeans in Australia in the 1690s. Now, flat earthers may latch onto this logic and say, well, we haven't verified the Earth is round with our eyes. But if we try to apply this as a doctrine for science that all individuals have to see things with our eyes, it'd be pretty limiting. If there's a, an event like a, I'll just use Boston bombing again, I'm not going to believe any of those events are real unless myself I get my leg blown off. But as far as our all swans are white problem, this was a pretty big crisis for verificationism until a philosopher named Karl Popper proposed a now famous solution. Rather than focusing on verification, scientists should rather focus on falsification. For Popper, good science is coming up with a hypothesis and then trying really hard to prove it wrong. If you can't, you can be confident in your hypothesis, say that all swans are white, but that doesn't mean it won't get proven wrong when, say, we discover a black swan or two in ensuing decades. If a statement could not theoretically be falsified, it ain't science. So the meaning of life is to be excellent to each other is still not science. So if I thought the Earth was flat, I might design several experiments which could prove it wasn't flat. And if my hypothesis that the Earth isn't flat is correct, then it's probably time to abandon flat Earth. Importantly, proving that the Earth is not flat does not prove that it is round, nor does proving that the Earth is not round prove that it is flat. What if it's, say, a donut balanced on a giant turtle? Now, we're going to talk a lot about Popper here, but I should probably mention that there are other approaches too. For instance, the probabilistic approach of someone like Thomas Bayes, who would do some math to give you a probability for something to be true. So a statement like, I'm 90% confident that eating five Tide Pods will kill you. Now, you might be wondering, are flat earthers good falsificationists? We test everything. You might say, hey, they're giving contrary evidence. There's an experiment in the 1800s, flight patterns, and our eyes. Right out there, that's Seattle. You shouldn't be able to see it. There should be hundreds of feet of curvature between us and them. You should barely be able to see the tops of those buildings. But there's a few problems, but let's focus on two. One, their evidence is usually bad. And two, a big part of falsification is trying to prove your own theory wrong, not proving someone else wrong to prove yourself right. So for the first one, let's look at a darling experiment for flat earthers, the Bedford Level Experiment. Samuel Robotham wanted to see if a boat would actually dip below the horizon as it would on a globe. And it didn't. So round Earth disproved? Not really. Experiment design in science is really hard. One of the hardest things can be controlling what are called confounding variables, i.e. external stuff that is going to screw up your results. And for the Bedford Level experiment, that confounding variable was atmospheric refraction, the bending of light caused by different air densities. So you design a new experiment to control for that variable, and you can test that, which Alfred Russell Wallace, a famous scientist, did. And that experiment, which uses objects that are higher up to control for refraction, provided evidence that the Earth was round. It's also more or less the experiment this guy does in the documentary. Which brings us to the second point, and an actually interesting question for science and falsificationism. Scientists raising contrary evidence is important in the scientific community, but flat earthers don't just want to falsify the round earth, they want to prove a flat earth. And that statement that the earth is flat, as Popper would argue, also needs to be tested. 
we have constantly to criticize our own theories, our own interpretations. But can it? Let's look how this plays out with this guy in his laser gyroscope and this guy with his flashlights. In the case of the gyroscope, a drifting gyroscope would suggest that the Earth is not flat, which turns out to be the case. We found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. And with the flashlight experiment, a light source that did not align with his holes correctly would also suggest that the Earth is not flat, which also happened. Interesting. Interesting there. So time to drop your previous hypothesis and come up with a new one to falsify. Right? Well, not quite. The problem with most woo-woo, whether it's anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, creationists, and so on, is that if you ask them, what evidence would you require to renounce this theory? The answer is, it probably doesn't exist. I won't change my mind on anything, regardless of the facts that are set out before me. As Behind the Curve highlights, even evidence to the contrary isn't quite enough. Instead of moving on, Laser Gyroscope Guy is convinced that heavenly energies are messing with his data, and the Flashlight Guy had some kind of reason to ignore the results of his experiment. Proposing a theory that can be falsified doesn't seem to be the name of the game for Woo Woo. This point is made so ironically clear when Patricia Steer, a flat earther, realizes that claims that she works for the CIA can never be sufficiently disproven to satisfy her critics. The thing about all of these things is I can't prove any of it wrong. Believe it or not, this kind of mental gymnastics that we see with our flat earth experimenters is a basic problem in a ton of science, not just flat earthers. Because one compelling criticism of falsificationism is that tests and hypotheses don't exist in vacuums. They exist in larger systematized theories. If we consider science to simply be the process of trying to falsify various claims, we can see the limits of this model with Newton's physics, who I think we can all agree is an OG scientist. Newton came up with his laws of motion, his theory of gravity. He also invented calculus, and they all worked together. Armed with Newton's theories, scientists made predictions about how the solar system worked, figuring out celestial orbits with a combination of observation and math. Building on his theories, scientists made new claims and tested those claims, and then those claims would become the basis for other tests. Yes, science! Now, where's the problem? Well, Newton's model predicted Mercury's orbit would do one thing, and then it did not that. So, does this falsify Newton's model? And if so, should we all just drop it and move on? Of course, he also thought he could turn metal into gold and died eating mercury, making him yet another stupid bitch. Well, in contrast to falsificationism, physicist Thomas Kuhn understands science as working in paradigms. So for Newton's physics, keep on poking holes in it, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater until your inquiries point to some bigger, badder paradigm that comes around and can do everything Newton's model can do, but better. In this case, that bigger, badder paradigm was Einstein's relativity. And so for Newton, instead of Mercury proving him wrong, scientists just tweaked the model for as long as they could. Newton's laws could accurately predict so much not just the movement of most celestial bodies, but basic locomotion, engineering, and so much more. So certainly it wouldn't be good to throw it all away. To address this issue, some people just said, hey, there's another planet that would make Mercury's orbit weird, and Newton is still right. System tweaked. And in a perverse way, this is kind of how flat earthers operate. While you might say, the gyroscope drifted, flat earthers own. In reality, they just tweak the model in this case by positing the existence of heavenly energies. But does that make flat earthers real scientists? Unfortunately, no, because these tweaks should also get subjected to experiments. So if you're going to say heavenly energies are a confounding variable for your gyroscope experiment, you better find evidence of heavenly energies. And if you can't find any, maybe you should ask, is my model wrong? Maybe I should test a new hypothesis that the earth is round. According to Thomas Kuhn, this is how science works. You have scientists working off a bunch of unquestioned assumptions that gravity works like this, motion works like this, and then contrary evidence starts piling up. The system isn't overturned until someone comes along and suggests a new foundation to work off of, and then scientists kind of duke it out over who is right. Einstein's model, for instance, could account for Mercury's weird orbit and a bunch of other stuff while being able to make all the good predictions that Newton's model already did. Kuhn calls this a paradigm shift. Progress in science is built on people arguing over the truth before a new paradigm becomes the consensus, not necessarily capital T truths. 
Okay, so are flat earthers the Einsteins in this story, pointing to contrary evidence for a full paradigm shift? We're not just winning. We're crushing them. Well, not quite. I don't know how people believe that. You can think of Einstein coming along and saying, my model can do everything yours can do, but better because it did. Can the flat earth model help build long bridges, a functioning global positioning system, navigate airplanes, launch missiles across continents, transmit TV to your house via satellite, or do literally any of the hundreds, if not thousands of things that are predicated on a round earth? Nope, and yet, they still persist. Which brings us to something a little outside the realm of science and into a pressing problem for the modern world, jacking off. YouTube overlords, please don't demonetize this because we're just talking about just asking questions ing off. It's an epidemic in almost every modern political or internet debate. It goes like this. Is Wendy using your lunch money to buy heroin? Probably not, but how can we know? I don't want my lunch money going to drugs. Who's taking these drugs? What would be the point? I'm asking questions. In the case of Mark Sargent's massively popular flat earth clues, it's one big circle jack. While it may take five seconds to raise the question, why aren't oil companies drilling in Antarctica? It could take you a good five minutes to learn that in 1959, scientists convinced a bunch of countries that they shouldn't bring all their bullshit to the most remote and wild place on Earth. A few minutes later, you might learn these scientists argue that Antarctica should be open to discovery for people all over the world. In five more minutes, you might also learn that in 1991, to clarify things, they signed another treaty explicitly stating that to preserve Antarctica's environment, there can be no commercial activity for 50 years. Also, as it turns out, extracting stuff from the most remote place on Earth is extremely expensive and kind of dangerous. The original question, why don't companies drill in Antarctica, is like arguing a national park doesn't exist because obviously oil companies would be all up on that if it did. And look, that took me all that time to answer one single question. Another great example is flight patterns, where a flat earther might ask questions like, why didn't they go here? In which case you would have to explain how projecting a sphere onto a flat image distorts images, which was a cool thing we learned when we all discovered that Greenland is not as big as Africa. So why didn't they go this other way? Because it would take longer or there's not enough demand for a direct flight. Flat earthers may say they're winning the debate against round earthers, but this is more of a statement on how profoundly bad public debates can be. If in science the burden of proof rests on you to prove your hypothesis, jacking off functions by dumping the burden of proof on you with about 8 million questions. And by the time I've answered your question about why aren't there flights over the South Pole, you're ready to raise five more simple questions. How do we reconcile this with the fact that, like this guy, their natural inquisitive and rejection of norms could be beneficial to science if they were more scientifically literate. Science is built on asking questions. One of the primary problems is that questions aren't meant to exclusively start a debate. It's not I win and you lose. Rather, questions seek to start conversations that build consensus. Like saying, hey, Mercury's doing some weird shit over here, let's all figure this out. Instead, the questions posed by flat earthers are meant to prove the earth is flat by drawing doubt on the round earth. These kinds of arguments can be appealing because on the surface, leaving questions unanswered looks like you're wrong or hiding something. So instead of dumping on flat earthers, it's important for us to understand how science is done, how scientific consensus is made, and even be critical of when science is done badly. For instance, there's a ton of psychology studies out there that can't be replicated, and that is bad science, but it's probably not a conspiracy. All right, there's one more thing worth answering. Why? Why are flat earthers a thing? There are a lot of ways to account for flat earthers and other conspiracy theories. Some psychologists have suggested that conspiracy theories appeal to people who either feel powerless or insignificant in society. And yeah, we get that. In a world where literally everything is outside of your control, cracking the real answer to who shot JFK is appealing. It can make it feel like the world is rational and predictable. And that seems to be the basic appeal of flat earth that we're not a tiny blue marble drifting in the cosmos, but a special little terrarium that's the center of the universe. But unfortunately for this lady, you're looking at all different possibilities and making it come together and work. Science isn't about putting together random facts like pieces of a puzzle. Flat earthers speak to a larger crisis of trust going on in our society. And rather than relegating it to some corner of the internet with Chuck E. Cheese truthers, we should understand it as a larger crisis of the erosion of faith and expertise of all kinds. And this isn't harmless, as we can see with this guy. They want people dumb, blind, deaf to the truth, so they can inject you with their vaccines and 
their public schooling. It's not just that we need more scientists to understand genetics and evolution to cure disease, but that this line of conspiratorial thinking can make almost anything possible. From claiming a woman named Patricia works for the CIA because the last three letters of her name, to sending death threats to people who you think are crisis actors. And that's not even to talk about the almost extinct diseases that are making a comeback and killing people. Thanks, Internet. It's not that we should have blind faith in the talking heads of science, but understand the conventions and practices that got them to their conclusion. Was their experiment designed well? What level of confidence do they ascribe to their predictions? Does contrary evidence debunk a model? Or is it inevitable when studying things as complicated as, say, quantum physics or climate? So what do you think? Do we need better education on how science works? Or am I collecting my check from NASA? Well, it's actually Wix. You can build your own website for free by clicking the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.